Good evening. Jana Reese, Mormon journalist from the Religion News Service, covered recently the top 10 changes that have occurred under LDS President Russell M. Nelson's leadership. How was that data collected? Well, the next Mormon survey, too, conducted in 2022 and 2023, gathered responses from 1,420 Americans, identifying themselves as Latter day Saints. The survey asked participants to rate 15 specific changes introduced by President Russell M. Nelson using a scale ranging from very favorable to very unfavorable. Respondents who rated at least one change as very favorable, a total of 1,268 people, were given a follow-up question, asking them to choose their single most favored change. This follow-up helped filter out any blanket positive responses, providing a clearer measure of which changes were truly the most beloved by church members. This led to the top 10 changes that the LDS Church has made, while President Nelson, prophet, seer, and revelator, has been at the helm. So here is the top 10 list. Number 10, President Nelson called the first Asian American and first Brazilian apostles, bringing more global diversity to church leadership. Now, in 2024, here we are celebrating the church's first real step into the top leadership, not being 15 white Caucasian males. Number nine, changes to temple rituals expanded the role of Eve and, e and increased equality for women in sacred ceremonies. Or in other words, the church reduced the amount of sexism and unhealthy perspectives about women in the temple. Number eight, the church ended its century-long relationship with the Boy Scouts of America, choosing to focus on its own youth programs. And one must at least wonder how this ties to the fallout of the LDS Church and the Boy Scouts of America tied at the hip in child abuse settlements regarding all the children molested by LDS Scoutmasters. Number seven, women and youth are now allowed to serve as witnesses for baptisms, making a significant step toward gender inclusivity. There you go, women. You should be happy now. You, along with the children, get to witness baptisms. What huge strides we are making. Number six, the one-year waiting period between civil weddings and temple sealings was removed, making temple access easier for newlyweds, allowing them to have their wedding and still get sealed immediately following. But can you imagine how many parents, siblings, and other loved ones, including my own mother and father, had to miss the marriage of the one they love, weddings they had anticipated their entire lives. Can you imagine the harm and hurt done in the name of the old policy, only to have the church acknowledge in the modern age that it wasn't even necessary? Number five, parents are allowed to accompany their children during bishops' interviews, providing more transparency and safeguarding for families. First, isn't it Sam Young that we should thank for this? And in 2024, Shouldn't the policy be two adults are required, not allowed, to be in the room? By saying allowed, you're also saying that continued child abuse is also allowed. Number four, missionaries were granted the ability to call home weekly, a shift toward more emotional support for young missionaries. Can you imagine the outside perspective of how unhealthy it is to require that barely adult humans? in a high-demand religion who are pressured to leave their families for a year and a half to two years to go out to a foreign place with no family support system, be demanded to pay to get there and to live there only to work long hours and spread a particular religion's message, and then only being allowed to call home twice a year. That is the textbook definition of what a cult does. And only recently, we finally softened up to where everything I said is still true, except now you get to call home weekly. Number three, Nelson emphasized 
using the full name of the church, discouraging the use of the term Mormon to align with doctrinal teachings. When one considers how attached to this name we were in the past, it seems most likely an attempt to distance the church from the general public connecting it to the criticisms about it and to get one last dig at former church president Gordon B. Hinckley. It also seems to indicate that the church recognizes that the name Mormon just doesn't sit well with people outside the church. Number two, the Come Follow Me program encouraged gospel study at home, reflecting a broader move towards individual and family-centered worship, thereby making any problematic teachings passed from parents to children now the fault of the parents and the home, allowing the LDS Church to shift the blame even further for what others internally took to heart from what the church has taught its members in the past. And, drumroll please, the number one top change made under President Nelson, church members overwhelmingly favored the shift to a two-hour meeting schedule, down from three hours, improving the overall experience for many. In other words, the best thing the LDS Church gave us, in the opinion of believing Latter-day Saints, under the leadership of President Nelson, was less Mormonism. If you want to grasp how blind obedience and loyalty work, one only need wrestle with how believers see so much positivity in a list of changes from an unhealthy faith running away from its claims, its history, and its bad behavior. <laughs> 